Hey guys, so uh, just a real quick, well not too quick, but uh, a quick video on how to uh, correctly map uh, the 2010 uh, Chicago uh, energy usage data file from the uh, data portal uh, found at data.cityofchicago.org um, with the uh, 2010 uh, census blocks uh, shapefile also found on that data portal. So um, to start things out I'm going to drag uh, the census blocks file into my uh, canvas. Looks like that zip file got unzipped somehow, but uh, that's fine. Um, okay, so uh, uh, again, we might need to fix the registration. Um, again, if you enable this on the fly, and we can choose something like WGS84. Uh, if you don't see that option, you can always uh, punch in, say, 38. 57 and we'll see that it popped up right here so we can double click on that reply say okay and good we've got uh, it's mapping correctly and we are also going to uh, I downloaded a fresh version of the energy usage file uh, and I'm going to bring this also into our layers panel uh, it's a little large but uh came in successfully. Um, if you see the two, that's just because I've downloaded it a couple times, um, just for demonstration purposes. So uh, don't mind that if yours doesn't have the two here. Um, so how do we go about doing this? Well, first things first, uh, let's uh, right click on um, the open attribute table and we will look to see that uh, uh, I'll just put this over here so we can take a look and I'm going to actually come over here and uh, right click on the uh, energy usage go to the app open attribute table take a look at that and our goal here is to find uh, which of the uh, columns in the two data sets. And I'm just going to drag this over here. So we can see which ones match up. Um, this one, census block, appears to have the same uh, geo ID. So I think that's the one to go with. So we'll see that GOID here matches with this. So at least we know that this is basically the same amount of numbers. Uh, so the, these should match up. Um, so we can close out of these two and come back to my map. Uh, and what we can do is uh, double click on here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, Oddly about this data set, uh, the um, obviously they're all coming in as strings, uh, but that number is so long that uh, QGIS actually doesn't like to have a number that long. Um, so what we're going to do is try to bring to merge the uh, GOID uh, with. Uh, and keep it as a string. So I'm going to select joins, uh, click add. My join field is going to be, uh, I believe, uh, census block. That's the column that we just noted. And then we're going to go to GOID and we'll say OK. Um, I'm just going to take a 
a second for it to do it. And we will now go look and it does look like we do in fact have all the uh, files merged over. Now if we, I'm going to take a quick look uh, and go here and say click on attributes table. We're going to see if the uh, actual columns came in with data that we uh, can use. So I'm going to pull over. It does look like the, the numbers came over good. Uh, we do have some nulls. So that's, that should be okay. Um, we actually might want to fix that. No, okay. Uh, I'm thinking the nulls might just be unreported blocks, so let's not worry ourselves about that too much. Um, Okay, so uh, first things first, let's double click on the uh, shapefile layer. Uh, we're going to open up our field calculator. Click on that. I'll bring this in. Uh, and uh, what I want to do is look at the total kilowatt, uh, kilowatt hour uh, column. So that's a uh, a total of a kilowatt hours per census block sampled. Um, and we to do this, we're going to make sure that we're going to have a real number. We're going to output the field name as KWH. Uh, we're going to come down here to conversions and uh, select to real. We come down to fields and values and we're going to come down and find uh, a total KWH, double click on that, and then uh, close parentheses, uh, and we'll say uh, OK. Now, of course, if you want to look at anything else, you're welcome to go through that same process, because if you want to do a graduated scale, these will be uh, uh, have to be actually turned into away from strings. Um, so, if I go to uh, style now, and I go to graduated, and I choose uh, KWH, you'll see the 1.2, that means I've got a real number. Uh, and I want to now classify that, because everything came through correctly, it did. Uh, so now we have numbers. Uh, I'm gonna apply that Everything looks white because this number is huge, uh, much larger than actually the rest of these. Um, you see a couple blues up in here. So what we probably want to do is find a different way to, uh, if we look at the histogram, uh, load values. Uh, it's off the charts, it does appear to be. Um, so I'm going to try the natural breaks Jenks, uh, see if that gives us a better uh, distribution of values, and it looks a little bit better. Uh, so I might add some more classes, so maybe 10 over here, give it a second. Uh, apply that. And it's starting to look a little bit better. Um, so I might try uh, quantile. See how that worked. So that's uh, a little too lopsided. Um, so I might go to back to uh, uh, the Jenks one. Uh, it's up to you. You kind of have to play with it. Just be mindful that uh, uh, you kind of take a note how this scale breaks down um, as you're communicating your map. Uh, apply that. 
Um, uh, the thing about the census track is there's so many of these that we might um, think about how we can, uh, if we perhaps uh, turn off the uh, outline or the stroke, say OK, hit apply again. Um, and I might say 20 classes. We're kind of getting up there. Um, let's see if this. Gives us a little bit more. Um, um, but you get the picture. Uh, we want to see some diversity across all the sectors. Uh, but it's up to you how you want to actually perceive this. I'm going to kind of go back. Let's try the pretty break, see if that maybe works a little bit better. Yeah, that does not do anything for us. So we're just going to go back to um, natural breaks. Um, apply, say OK. Um, you'd likely want to do some more styling. Uh, I'm tempted to think that uh, perhaps a different color scale would be better for our purposes here. Uh, click apply. And now I'm kind of seeing a little more variation in color. That makes sense. So I can actually start seeing some patterns and maybe ask some more questions. Um, again, if you want to ever get the, um, uh, the outline or bring in some more information here, um, you could always say bring in uh, like a communities area map and kind of pull this back. Um, maybe change the color here to say um, maybe a dark gray. Say OK and apply. Um, but it's up to you how you style it. Um, and then, of course, there's a great deal of other data sets that you might actually explore in here. Um, just in review, uh, this data set has, not this one, excuse me. I want to uh, take a look here, open attribute table, let it load. Uh, so we'll see uh, energy usage. Um, so we've got we've got a month by month. Um, if we come down, let's see what we got uh, thermal. Further down. Um, uh, so this data set's actually extremely comprehensive, and you could probably um, a number of things for you to look at, regardless of what you're interested in. Um, so I encourage you to do that. Be creative. Um, Occupied units, um, average house size, building age, etc. Um, so this might be interesting to get some context. And again, this uh, data set isn't, um, it's not perfect, but it does have a great deal uh, of stuff. Uh, you can check the data portal to see how um, these things are, are collected and organized um, to get more information on what these numbers, numbers actually mean. But that's enough for us today. Um, so that's it for me. That's how you map Chicago energy uh, in QGIS. So uh, thank you.